Thank God it's Friday. Welcome to the show. I am Muraya Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Nima Akasha Zibiri. How are you doing? Good morning, ladies. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's Okwe's birthday today. Yes. One of our yes. Okay. Okwe, Okwe Shen Shen Jobi. Jobi. Mm. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You know better than to not wish Okwe happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. She's looking so beautiful this yeah. morning. Oh, I haven't our, seen her. She's our producer. Yeah. She's looking very colorful, like a popcake. Like a cupcake. Oh, she's she's looking colorful. Looking her hair looks really Brian lovely. She's, no, she's like wearing no, like this no, short. Very colorful. Oh, okay. <laughs> you look beautiful like a cupcake. Yeah. <laughs> yes, cupcake is a compliment. I had a bit of drama yesterday. No, maybe she say moi moi. She looks hot like moi moi. I had a bit of drama yesterday. Day on my page. So a friend had gone to a cafe in Abuja and she was walked out because she was in the hijab. And the moment Amina shared it, I got provoked. I shared it and that's where Wala started. Fortunately, the owner of the place did not know how his staff treat Muslims. He's Muslim himself and he reached out to me. He was very bitter, bad, feeling bad about it. But that's what's trending along Muslim platforms now. That, you know, the place should be boycotted. And yesterday, 9 to 11, he called me. He's lost some money and a lot of customers. Bookings were cancelled. Orders were cancelled. He's not aware of how his staff behaved. He's addressed that. He called. We spoke this morning as well. He's you know, reprimanded that staff. He has addressed the behavior and is apologizing. If you're on my page, I also apologize to the lady. He, he yes. called her personally. personally. He called me personally. I sent the I, numbers. I of, I mean, the lady. you. Because you've used your voice and your platform to yes. speak up, which is great, and that's exactly what this is about. You know the you use what unfortunate you thing? He has a staff that is deliberate about this. Because before he replied me, that staff used his business page mm. to reply me that they were doing it for security reasons. I shall know that there's security and banditry in the north. <laughs> Imagine so, that. A lot of people have a different agenda, but their money go copy. Oh, uh, You know, yeah, staff, they'll the get their salary. So... He now he knows to train and select and the staff and, educate. and they have the same uh, business vision oh, that he has with him yeah. before they destroy his business. But there are Muslims all over the world. Yes. And we exactly. have to understand that. And, and, no, and, and, and this place is in Abuja. Abuja of all places. Yeah. I'm, I'm so I happy think one of the things, um, the fallout of this is the owner of the business himself is a Muslim man who has a child who wears hijab. So obviously he does not agree with the staff and he has apologized and is asking, you know, Nigerians because they've taken action. They are cancelling orders, they are boycotting the place, and he's saying, we have handled this, we have apologised to the person, yeah. and, she has, and she has also accepted the apology, and yeah. she's made a tweet, so we oh, should know that he's sincere about that. Thank you very that. much, yes, sir. Very that's sincere. fantastic. How are you doing, Tokwe? I'm very good. Um, mm. I, uh, I love what you're wearing. I don't know why. I, just, I love like her it. makeup it's and her hair. Ah. Yeah, you know, it's ELC dressing. We have to dress at oh. most of the event. Um, but yesterday, one of the things that um, that was shared at the program, authentic leadership, um, was the top topic was that beware of of um, a leather without wrinkles. Beware of leaders that have no scars. Beware of success that has no story. And many times we hide or we think that our stories are not like, oh, they should not know this part of me. But those are the things that reinforces the, your, the authenticity of your leadership. Mm -hmm. And we would like our leaders to be more authentic with their struggles with us because it is not easy to rule, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to lead Nigeria. And if they would acknowledge we are having this challenge, we would do this law, these people are doing this. Like, be, be honest with the people that you're leading. Yeah. Let us understand the sincerity. You know, interesting, that, that, that came out in our conversation yesterday with our guest that we, that, um, we were hosted yesterday. Mm -hmm. And he said that a lot of people, that many people actually have money before they go into government, but they don't tell us. We don't know that you are a made man, that you're a businessman, you're, you have this value. Then when you come in, we all say, ah, he's stealing money. Mm. Once you come into government, we assume that ah, he has stolen that money. Now he has a house in Banana Island. Yes. Actually, you've been building over the years and saving money. So, but because they're not, they're not transparent mm -hmm. about where they're coming from, and what they, they have. It. They tell you to disclose. You say, yeah, he's not. You don't want to disclose. They don't know what you have. So when you start having a house in Banana Island, we understand. Okay, from your business, that all favors that you got. Well, you know what I got from that is that um, when you say beware of a leather without wrinkles, mm. thing is. Many people are so unforgiving of people when they're on their journey and making mistakes. Mm. We do Very not true. give people the grace to make their mistakes. Mm. We're yeah. calling them out. We want to shut them down. We want Something to that just um, exactly bring it out and punish people right. for mistakes that they needed to have made to be where they are today. So we have to look at that really. 
and learn to be more, to be kinder towards each other. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be kinder, remember the girl that danced naked the other day? Mm -hmm. yes. That's part of her journey. Yes. She saw that that would be said. She has, you know, she has made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she has Terrible. learned from it. And that's this journey. And in future, she'll be like, okay, yes, I shouldn't have done that. So, so yes, we can condemn the act. We so can condemn she's reached person. where yes. she's going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just letting you know that mm -hmm. it's part of this journey. Mm -hmm. right. How are you doing, Maria? I'm good. I'm amazing. I'm fine. You feel great. <laughs> and I'm happy it's, to be here. And you? Uh, I'm everybody I'm fine, you know, I mean, interestingly, I think about my own every single day, oh, mm. like every single day, I mean, I understand what you're saying in your dad passed, every single day, you're constantly thinking, but you know what, life would move on, and it's great that um, she lived a good life, and mm. I'm thankful, so let's go on a break, when we come back, we go to the phone pages of the paper, stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Hey. Elijah, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to start with the nation. Body of collapsed Lagos building owner retrieved. Okonkwa Soludo Oba Ozigbo pledge peaceful Anambra poll. MJ Niger complete issuers of the 89.9 billion Naira bonds. Court orders EFCC to pay, to pay man 5 million naira for declaring him wanted. APC orders warring all your groups to reconcile. 360,000 download e naira speed up wallet app. And FG operators reject the $1.97 million spectrum fee. Okay, which story are you starting with? Okay. You want to take a No, take the EFCC. Okay, so this man called, um, ah, his name is. Kennedy Sule Izuagbe, obviously from Anessa Court. <laughs> he sued the EFCC to court for declaring him um, wanted on their page and on their social media and on their website. His picture is there. They declared him wanted. Right. EFCC is saying that they had inside that report of about five billion naira laundered through him. They are doing investigation. He's saying they did not get a court order to declare him wanted. Ooh, and they put him on right. their page since 2019 yeah. as wanted. And, you know, even though they've had two other, you know, court orders saying this is wrong, he's still on their page. So oh. he came this time to court to ask for 500 million or billion naira um, compensation. compensation, but the court awarded him 5 million. So Wait, this is 500 billion. Is, no, he, he came for 500 million. 500 million. million as compensation, but he got 5 million as um, the court ordered the FCC to remove his name from their no, page, apology. apologize to uh -huh. him on that page publicly as well and on their social media platform and pay him compensation for doing yeah, that to yes, him. Yes. So yes, there's always, you know, I'm always happy when there's ways to resolve issues mm -hmm. aside of that mm -hmm. peaceful so institution again okay. established. Maria? Yeah, so Inaira, we remember Inaira launched mm -hmm. just recently and they're saying that the numbers are high for those who have downloaded it. So the Inara speed wallets for individuals, they have in 10 days only 367,000 downloads, while the Inara speed merchants for businesses have recorded 58,600 downloads. And um, they also said that the penetration of those who have downloaded it, that is iPhone users, has moved from, to an 81 country, uh, from 75 countries to 81 countries in 10 days. So it's quite a popular app despite you know the back yeah. of all we were we had conversations towards the launch so it looks like many nigerians uh all right you know downloading this so let's uh get a quick update from the from lagos state the building that collapsed so the governor is i mean he's really taking this seriously he has um as we said he has inaugurated a panel and they've been um they've started work already and it's given them four weeks and uh, since then um i think they said that um they found the owner of the building, Ms. Late Femi Oshibono, and his friend Wali have been removed yesterday from the rubble. Uh, the governor um, said the chairman of the committee, Mr. Tony Ainde, and is going to be doing his job without fear or favor, and he's going to have all the support he needs. Other members have also been mentioned, and um, their, I think their task will be to to ensure, to find out what happened. I mean, I think that's what Nigerians want to, want to know. And I think Lagos State Governor is, being, is careful to say that Nigerians deserve to know what happened and they need to do a thorough investigation and then provide some kind of report in four weeks. So we're all waiting for this report. And he has asked that we have flags at half-mast because we're going to be having a three-day mourning 
you know, in honor of those who've lost it, almost 40 people have died. Mm. We confirm, I think about 39, but you know, it's looking like 40, well. and they don't even know there's still more bodies. So we'll get an update later on, on, on the state of things and the Koyiv uh, building, but I'm happy that the government's on top of this, and uh, hopefully we'll get some real results after four weeks. So let me take this story on the 5G spectrum. So um, there is uh, going to be an auction on the 10th of December for the spectrum. It's like um, by the, the NCC, for each slot of the spectrum will be put at 3.5 gigahertz band. And the telecommunication companies are saying this is the pricing is not right, that you cannot charge $197.4 million per spectrum, and that this is over 100% above the estimated market value that it should come for, and it would raise um, non-participation non of people that can be involved in it, and it doesn't align with best practices. There's no reason for the excessive hype. More than 36% difference within the, what should be the standard yeah. price and what Nigeria is planning to offer. That is not just it's not an individual. All the players within this industry disagreed with the right. price. So I'm Moving on quickly to the punch, Ikoi building, we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Police kill three during clash with Lagos um, tricycle operators over 100 Naira. Female rep orders Omo Agege's aides for arrest, alleges intimidation, and SSA denies. Police hunters and attack on kill Ikiti suspected kidnapper with AK-47 rifle cash recovered. Ogun local government chairman faults commissioner over demolition in forest reserves. Cortis robbers kidnappers hiding under IPOB's name to unleash mayhem, says southeastern governors. Um, government officials, Estacos, others go $3.9 billion in one year, says report. National Assembly tackles Amechi over Nigerian Niger Republic rail line and um, others. Okay, so we drama from the National Assembly. So the lawmaker representing Uluyoli Federal Constituency, Honorable Tolu Lokwe, Akonde Shadikwe, allegedly ordered the arrest of the senior special assistant to the deputy senate president on print, Mr. Jide Babalola, over what she called harassment in the elevator. Mm. So according to the report, the <laughs> last time um, Mr. Babalola's account, he said that they were in the elevator and there were too many people. And because he survived COVID just a few months back, he was just being careful. So there was no how he wasn't going to bump into her. But she insisted he bumped into her in ways that were, you know, um, inappropriate. Hmm. Um, and so he insisted that, no, he didn't even know she was a lawmaker. Mm -hmm. That he, he, he thinks his offense was because he addressed her as madam when she complained about being bumped into. And he said, no, madam, it's because of the way we were all, you know, plenty inside the elevator. And that the elevator is not the one specially... Uh, you know, designated for lawmakers that they were in the general elevator mm -hmm. and she was in that elevator with him. But she insisted that he, he was a deliberate harassment because when he, she tried to confront him, he looked at her in a funny way and, he, and she said, please step back. He turned, according to her, let me take her account again, he said, this is a case of gender harassment. He got into the elevator after me. I was talking to a staff member of the National Assembly and all I said to him was, please don't step back. And he turned on me, intimidating me because I am a woman. This is a case of gender bias and gender in intimidation. Before we know, Sha, they have arrested the man and he had to be bailed by another lawmaker from Kogi because of what happened. I would like to, that the cases of gender um, abuse Everywhere. And, 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 you know, no, female harassment mm. is taken very seriously, that we don't play this kind of you know, watered-down games with it because serious cases of that happen. Happens. And also, if it is truly... The case um, that you know that, he, he's, that his account was correct is also not right that we are intimidating ourselves because of our office, right. which is Nigerian style. All right, let me go on a quick break. Can we come back and continue with the review? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Looking fresh for your days? Get even fresher with Close Up. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula. It cleans deeply, fights 99% of bacteria, and cools intensely. Keeping you protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Protected and fresh. Let's take a picture. Protected and fresh. Still fresh, still protected. Feeling cool and protected. All day confident to get close. Oh, yeah, take the close up shot. New Close Up Triple Fresh Formula. How to make a perfect bowl of love? A 
perfect blend of taste that brings every ingredient to life. The fusion of different spices. The unique aroma that rejuvenates your senses. The heartwarming deliciousness. And the satisfaction that comes from every bite, which makes you say, Hmm, I love my Indomie. When I move a bit at the car, see the sparks fly like electrician. And I... Sharp. Let's have one more for safety. All right. Mm-hmm. When I move a bit at the car, come and dance them. Oops. Come on, man. My bad. Okay, where were we? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I have been using it for years. Oh, mother, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains remover. Hapik sticker formula settles on stains and gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergent and bleach. Wow! Some things are necessary, but still stressful. Put on the fire. Well, we do too, and we believe that banking shouldn't be one of them. Juju! Yes, ma'am. Please come and help me put doors in the cupboard. We're always looking for ways to make things easier for you by providing simpler and better solutions. Junior! So when you're tired of the same old, same yes, old... Yes, daddy. Yes, mommy. Don't worry, we just wanted you to get the remote for us from the table. Ah, no problem at all, Dad. Keystone Bank is just a branch, a call, or a click away. Experience innovation that goes beyond word. Happy New Year to you and yours. Political power is not the ability to be a lord over the other person. It is the authority given to help point a people in the right direction. If the peace and progress of Anambra State is your desire, then you should resist every temptation to spread fake news, steal ballot boxes, and destroy lives and properties in the forthcoming gubernatorial elections. Anambra State is not just a geographical location, it is the people in it and their well-being. This message is brought to you from the Centre for Democracy and Development, CDD, with support from the UK government. Staying with us. All right, so we're going to continue with um, the punch, I believe. Yes. Um, Mami, have a story. Go ahead, please. So, um, the Minister for Transport um, was when was before the Senate and House Re and House of Reps Joint Committees on Land and Marine Transport, you know, to talk about his budget for 2022. And um, according to the report, they said the senators became upset mm. when he brought. Uh, um, the budget for the for the Nigeria Maradi Rail. Mm. That's the one that goes all the way to mm -hmm. Niger. And Niger. they're saying that mm, sorry, Niger. <laughs> they said that okay. So according to that particular rail line would be a standard gauge. But the ones that they've done so far are narrow gauge. The standard gauge is a according to them like a more modern, updated mm. rail line co uh, compared to what they've used across the country. So for them, they feel it's a sort of marginalization. And um, Senator 
Senator Angie Magoje, who is the chairman of the Senate Committee Marine Transport, also mentioned that, you know, we're doing lots of rail from um, Nigeria to Niger. We're doing, you know, different parts of Nigeria. What happened to the um, middle belt? Mm -hmm. You know, some of the areas, are they, you know, in why are we yeah. marginalized, sort of? Anyway, the minister says, first of all, the difference between the narrow gauge and the standard gauge is speed and that there's an amount of money that goes in, which is more expensive than the standard gate. And to raise that sort of money to do that across the country, you know, was not tenable. Mm -hmm. And that they are still talking about the loan for the Nigeria Maradi um, line as well. And that um, because uh, they also question the economic benefit of having a rail that goes all the way to another country when we have rail, especially in the southeast, Port Harcourt rail, that brings a lot more business than, you know, then, um, having a rail all the way to Niger. And he says it's not for any sentimental reason, but that there are economic benefits to have a rail that goes to other countries that we, um, you know, will have access to other West African mm. countries. And that was conversation. All right. Is yeah, that we could take a story. Yes, yeah, something yeah. happened in the Ogun State's um, Forest Reserve. So the Ogun State Commissioner for Forestry, Tsuji Akiyoshi, or Akiyoshi, um, went into a forest, a particular forest within the Ijebu East local government, and they destroyed the shanties. According to him, the reason for that, this will be a continuous process because they want to ensure they reduce hideouts within these forest reserves. However, the, the local government um, chairman has re, re traded words. Wali Adibayo retreated, Adidayo retreated words with him that this, look, this area that you went to destroy is an area that we as... Um, government officials visited where we were seeking votes for elections, that there are government properties that were built within those forest reserves, that these people vote for us, and now they are coming to meet us as local government, that they have destroyed our homes, they've destroyed our schools, and that they, they as a local government are now having to pay for what they had no idea of what is going on. In between the both of them, we haven't, um, I'm hoping the governor would step in because it's obvi obvious that we need to protect our, go our forest reserves and we need to ensure that we, uh, mm. um, criminal elements don't take advantage of the fact right. that there's a forest to inhabit. But if there are citizens of Nigeria who are legitimately living within those areas, they should also have been carried along before destroying their homes and okay. their schools. I was going to touch on the federal government orders 10,000 tractors from Brazil. No. From the and the reason why I said I wanted to take it because was, we, all, we also reminded yesterday of our, of our conversation that it's one thing to say we are ordering from Brazil and it's another thing to go, who exactly, have, 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 who exactly has ordered it? Yes. And when does it arrive? And when does it start work? Mm. So we're seeing that they're they ordering 10,000 units of tractors and 50,000 units of um, equipment to be assembled in the country to be. So when papers so, are carried these to bees, mm. we shouldn't celebrate I, yes. or just get excited about mm. it. Yes, exactly. Until, until, yeah. until we see it. We should stop announcing an, um, um, order. We should, stop, we should only announce when it's been fully Arrived. implemented. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Let's find a story we've not taken. Southeast governors to IPO go meet FG on Kanu. Kenya confirms in court Kanu didn't undergo extradition procedures, proceedings. Pandemonium as policeman killed tricycle operator and two others in Lagos. Bianca Ojuku attacks Obiano, accuses him of destroying APGA. On Russia's report, FG inaugurates committees to restructure MDA's commissions and agencies. Article governors Udom list Nigeria's woes. Okay. A police officer, according to the report, and the punch was um, stopped a kekemara at a mirror. And usually, I think the, uh, the uh, KK operators have to pay 100 naira, which the one he stopped said, I don't have the money. His name is Ele Ele. He, could, he said, I have, I have, this is my first uh, trip. I have not made money yet. And before they knew it, he got a knife and stabbed him to death. This provoked a reaction from all the operators around, they decided to attack the police officer. And according to an eyewitness report, he continued to wield the knife till he was able to escape. So they took the body to the Meron police station and dumped the body there. But some of the operators were still provoked and so decided to throw bottles and stones into the police station and attempted to set the police station on fire. Mm -hmm. The police, re uh, you know, retaliated with shooting um, bullets as well as tear gas into the crowd. And that stray bullet killed two other people in the same report. You know, we... we don't want doesn't to solve anything. deal with this issue of uh, police brutality. We have to deal with it and make scapegoats of the officers 
that should not yeah. do this. Put their names in papers. So, something that put, put, uh, puts people's trust back in the system that, you know, the system will take care of such abuses uh, rather than resort to self-help. So self-help is what you got here knives. Ah. I, I wonder, knife, knife welding police officer. Ah. Anyway, yeah, sorry, yes, so uh, former, the former president of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, and governor of um, Akwa Ibom, Udom Emmanuel, were in Kaduna recently, and they said that um, Nigerians, Nigerians are trapped in the net of poverty, insecurity, backwardedness, and bad governance. And that the only way, the former vice president said, the only way for Nigerians to really move forward is for us to be united. And, you know, he gave an example. He says for him, he doesn't see Nigerians as Igbo, Hausa, or Yoruba. He sees you as just Nigerian. And that's why when he was getting married, he selected his, he did not select a particular place to marry his wives. He married his wives from different places. Jeez. And now all their brothers and sisters have different backgrounds and things like that. So it's important that we are united, we see each other as one. And our differences should not separate us, but instead bring us close together. together that even our faiths even though they are different we cannot insist that we have one faith mm -hmm. but you know we in our different faith we still come together and that's the only way nigeria can move forward so let me take the story of the chairman of the southeastern governors forum and he's also the governor of a Boeing state governor david umai stated to the press you know and the specific specifics of it was that cultists Armed robbers, kidnappers are hiding under the guise of IPOB to cause issues within the Southeast. Um, it was also mentioned in the fact that he's in talks, he wants to, he's going to have conversations with the president to see how they can find a political solution to the issue of um, um, Inam Dikanu, saying that the conversation would carry the fact that the Southeastern governors are saying. These issues are political. Let us resolve it politically. He mentioned how there needs to be more to be done to re release the region from the stronghold of criminals that have taken over the place. He said that there are some illegal elements declaring um, stay at home and that they are not, it's not, there's, it's not one body, it's not, coerced, it's not a, it's not a unif un unifying force and that they are discussing with them to find a way to ensure that there's no, the stay at home is no longer implemented and everybody res resumes their activities um, within the state, but it seems like the, the entire southeastern governments are speaking with one voice concerning how to deal with the crisis mm. going on within their right, In a related story, so Kanu's younger brother, Namdu Kanu's younger Kingsley Kanu, has alleged that the Kenyan government have finally uh, admitted that um, Kanu wasn't legally extradited to Nigeria. According to him, that um, they had released some statements recently um, in their defense, and they were denying their, com their complicity in the um, extradition uh, of, of, of Namdi Kano, but according to him now, he's saying now, based on their responses, it is clear that they did not follow due process in extract, and that can actually be taken up. Okay, moving on now to the Nigerian Tribune very quickly. Uh, let's find a story of not taking all your APC crisis. Stakeholders get one week to harmonize positions. Britain approves world's first COVID-19 pill. ASU gives FG 48 hours to rescue victims of Uni Abuja kidnap. 2022 budget FG to partner states for food, security, promote financial inclusion, and uh, FG set to scrap, merge some agencies. All right, which story? So in Britain, um, there's a, Britain found a pill for COVID-19. which they is found? Uh, yes, they've developed one. Uh, okay. According to them, they become the first country, according to the report, sorry, to approve a potentially game-changing COVID-19 antiviral pill. They developed it in joint, uh, jointly with the U.S., a company called Merck and Richback. And they said that they will start to administer it as soon as a person who's um, potentially more uh, likely to lose their lives due to COVID. So those people in that area that they call um, risky, those who have severe illnesses and obesity and all other age and diabetics, those are the patients that they will start to use the pill for immediately their test results come out and they are preparing for this because you know they, they are they projected that they will have a very dangerous more damaging winter See, they project coming it. that's what they are. no i mean i'm just you know i'm taking it like that we talk about research all the time yeah. we were the ones shouting that our goal would have done wonders in 2020 when covid started here and you know we talk it to till now our okay. NAVDAC said that they have a research product and we've not come out with anything but these are serious countries who 
know what their universities should and be they doing. Have and they, they have something on ground. Not just start in 2021, right. so they can yeah. come up with something mm -hmm. in a few no, no, months. No, but this no, I'm going to this, this back was... end of work. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so ASU. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so the leadership of ASU, Abuja chapter, is giving government 48 ultim uh, 48 hour ultimatum, um, given the kidnapping of their colleagues and you know the the children, uh, three professors and uh, you know their children as well. Six persons were kidnapped, two professors, one senior lecturer, and three of their family members. The kidnappers have reached out to the families of um, the victims and are asking for uh, 50 million per person. So that's 300 million. Um, the um, leadership of ASU, Abuja chapter, is saying that they are unhappy with, you know, 48 hours and they haven't yes. seen, you know, anything to show that um, the security operatives are on it. And they are asking that uh, with immediate effect, a fence be built around the staff quarters, that that particular staff quarters was built during the Shehu Shagari regime. Mm. It, was, it was originally a police barracks and then it was converted to staff quarters. I never had a uh, perimeter Opa. fence, so... They're asking for that, and yeah. then all illegal occupants in the staff quarters should be sent away all immediately. Right. We need to wrap up the papers, but I, I can't run off without taking this story because it's, it's kind of the problem, the Nigerian story problem we're having. So I read the story about federal government get to scrap, set to scrap, um, scrap, and uh, merge some agencies together, right? I thought it was a good story, so I read the story, and then what I read was that the Orosoy reports, remember the Orosoy mm -hmm. report, right? So they are set, you know, Orosoy reports came out of a committee that was set up and gave yes. the report. Yes. Now they set up two committees to review, review the report the of the committee. Mm. To let us know, I mean, come on, man, this is the Nigerian Just the, we have. We have all agreed that the Orosoy report, report should be implemented. Yes. Let us implement it. 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 Let us
Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC Communications Story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get an in-depth into all the various topics. And you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's Your View. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. alleged gender harassment in the elevator yesterday. Good morning, madam. Are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning. Good to have you on the show. So, obviously, we read your story in the papers this morning, and we'd just like to know exactly your take. What exactly happened? Yes, um, what happened? A very, very yesterday was a very very sad day for me. Very, very sad. Um, because I never expected that kind of thing to happen within the walls of the National Assembly. If it can happen within the walls of the National Assembly, imagine what the woman out there is going through. I was in the elevator, and there were quite a few other people there because I was on my way to a meeting. So I was leaving the building. Um, there was um, other people there, and a particular gentleman who I was chatting with, who was a a staff of National Assembly. Then I noticed that the man in front of me was too close to me because of the people in the elevator. So I made a statement to him. I said, please, don't step back. I don't think there was anything wrong with that statement. He now turned around at such close proximity to me in my face. And that was quite intimidating, telling me basically that I had no right to tell him not to step back. I have my national identity, I mean, sorry, not national, my national assembly ID card, my identity card on me. So obviously, he knew who I was. So I said to him, I said, you behaved very badly here. 
And I wonder, if you please tell me who you are? Because I was going to step up the case. You know, that I have so, 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 and so. At the time, I didn't catch the name because I was so intimidated. We stepped out of your elevator and I was so upset and I was walking towards the exit where I knew I would meet the security sergeant in us and bring the issue to their attention because I didn't feel safe. And then I ran into my colleague, the chairman of the hotel, and I immediately told him that this is what this man has just done to me. At that point, they told me to apologize to him. The minister of health was there. He pulled me aside and said I should calm down because of my health. And then I continued. By then, the sergeant in arms was aware of what was going on and was walking down the corridor towards us. At that point, I told them again what this man did. And I said to them that I am going to make formal charges about this. And I left the building. So and I went to the... Honorable, to so did he at any point touch you? No. He did not touch me. He was in my face. Okay. Right. And I needed to prevent him from stepping back. Because if he stepped back, what he meant is his body would be touching my body. Right. His back would be touching my front. And I thought that was intimidation. Right. right. And which was why I said, it could have happened in error. Which was why I said, please don't step back. And I believe the fact that I said, please don't step back. Right should not have resulted in this. Right. If he did not have a mindset that a woman meant nothing. Okay. If I was a male member of the house, what happened yesterday would never have happened. All right, let me get a few I more questions in for you. Right. So, Mother, Honorable mm -hmm. Ma, um, the man in question is the spe senior special assistant to the deputy senate president on, on print. His name is Jide Babalola. He says that he it was merely a case of bumping into you. That he had, uh, you, he said you had accused him of bumping into you, and he said to you, Madam, I didn't bump into you. This is me quoting him as he said, said it. Now, is, was this really a case of bumping into you? you take, did you take offense at being, as being, as, at being addressed as Madam instead of Honorable? That is not the case, Madam. There is nothing wrong with addressing me as Madam, because I am a woman, and you will address a woman as Madam. And I do not even remember him using the word madam at all. And he did not bump into me. I prevented him from bumping into me, and that infuriated him that I had the audacity to tell him not to step back. Right. Okay. Um, Ma'am, you said. All I said was, please don't step back. Right. And he challenged me. Right. And I said, because. If you step back, your body will touch my body. Mm. I never want to use the word bump. Okay, ma'am, you mentioned and that I have no right, basically. If I right. remember, I lost his word, his choice of word, but his interpretation of right. the word. Let me, let, me get, let, me get, right. let me get a question in for you. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, um, yes. So in the beginning, when you started narrating the story, you said that there were other people in the elevator with you. Were the, are those people willing to confirm what transpired between you that you actually asked him please to not bump into you and can they confirm that he was rude towards you and um when if that is confirmed what is the step that the national assembly would take towards this okay um yes there were people there yes there are witnesses that can tell you and collaborate what i said happened and yes i have informed the leader of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Senator Bajadia Mila, um, yesterday night. And again, I will put it formally in writing this morning. All right. Okay, so I wanted to ask you this question. Um, obviously, you, you, it wasn't you. I, I cannot imagine how you felt. It's your experience. Um, like Nima mentioned during the, um, um, earlier. earlier during the newspaper review, there are many women being constantly harassed around the country and they do not have the platform you have to be able to um, speak up the way you have done. Um, I want to ask you that, what, what are you hoping to achieve by prosecuting him and how do you intend to um, use this experience to ensure that no other person goes through that where they will feel intimidated because 
they spoke up. They, they, they spoke up and said, "Don't come close to me." Yes. I, I thank you for that question. In the past 24 hours, I have been intimidated by what I say the journalist than the world of journalism, because the gentleman happens to be a journalist. But I thank God that I have the confidence to be able to stand my ground on this matter. And this also brings to at the attention of the whole of Nigeria what women are going through. Because if I, in my safe confines of my workplace, the National Assembly can be faced with that kind of intimidation as a member of the Nigerian legislative, um, well, like on the caucus, can you imagine what women out there are faced with every day? If that can happen to me, this needs to draw attention to the fact that Nigerian women are suffering. We're suffering. If I had kept quiet, it would have been okay All right. for him to bump it to me. Thank you very is much. That what I'll, 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 is yeah. I have to wrap up at this point, but um, thank you for sharing your story. We'll try to um, maybe talk more about this after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. My name is Gloria Ogon. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom-built state-of-the-art news headquarters. TVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, Curtsy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With these bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestrial, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online, and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment and Hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get an in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. 
How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script check. Are we set in the PCR? All team in place. PCR check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights up. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script check. Are we set in the PCR? All team in place. PCR check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights up. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. I want to go. 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 I to go. I want 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 to go. I For staying with us. So earlier we spoke with Honorable Tulu Lokpe Akonde Shadipe, who expressed her experience uh, that we read on the papers. But you see, this is an issue of personal space. A lot of Nigerians may not understand what it means, personal space. So myself and Tokwa will try to demonstrate what she was trying to say exactly. So Tokwa, you are going to be Honorable in the elevator. Mm -hmm. I will be the gentleman walking into the elevator, and then we'll see what happens. So come stand right here. So She's in the elevator already, and I'm the I am the male honourable, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to enter the elevator. So I enter the elevator. Hey, hang in there, hang in there. So I enter the elevator and I come right here. Don't, don't step back. Are you really, really so close? I'm so actually. don't step back. Meaning don't step back. Now yeah. instead of me to say, oh, I'm so sorry, move forward. Yeah. Or step forward. This is when you say don't step back. Instead of me to move forward, I'm like this. Which so and she's like, ah. yeah. So she's wondering, ah, mm -hmm. in my face. Mm. So now that's my to many my team. Big deal, but you are in somebody's space. Personal space. Somebody's personal space. So and I personal think... space is the physical space in me. So it's a thing. Before we think it's something that people bring up and talk. So mm -hmm. it's the physical space immediately surrounding someone mm. in which encroachment can feel threatening or uncomfortable. So she said she felt intimidated. So, so it's yeah. not that it was a feeling. She just wanted to express because how dare he mm. encroach on his personal space. It's actually a feeling you get when someone goes beyond what you... It's, it's, is respect, respectfully respect. the distance that it should give right. between each other. But also, she mentioned that it was an elevator and there were other people in the elevator as well. So maybe it was a bit tight. tight. But as you um, demonstrated, just one step forward would, would have just created... Out of respect. Out of respect for the person. So Let me other. take his account again. And just for the benefit of our viewers, he was interviewed in the punch, detailed and quoted well. So that's why I'm relying on this. He said at the point, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know she was a honorable member. So if she was just anybody, which he had, you know, been under that misconception that she was just anybody, so this could fly. Also, he went on and said, 
I don't usually use the elevator for lawmakers. So if he was a lawmaker, of course, this would not have happened. Mm. But of course, again, he thought he was just any, any, just any person. regular person. So women go through this daily. I remember hating it and people thinking it was just because of the hijab. When I said, don't come to my space, I don't pay me certain uh, patronizing comments. I see it as an abuse of my person. It seems like, ah, what thing they do, you they abnormal. But just as you read what it means, for whatever I consider the, the limits that you can go, that's where you should stop. The yeah. moment I don't feel comfortable, you go back. Right. So in a, an elevator, for instance, she says, don't move forward. The, the, the respectful thing to do, whether she's Step female aside. or male, is try to create that space. Mm. Because in our public buses, women go through this daily. When you are made to stand in certain buses, the man behind is making it seem like heaven will fall. Some people would sit beside you in the bus, and you're not just comfortable by the way the brushing and the touchings are happening. But you don't have the platform to speak about it. And this woman, obviously what she felt to, to went through is real. It happens to people daily. You want to say, ah, Nami, cover your larger. Women around will even start to say, what, what are you mm, saying? And some right. women even are physically, sexually yeah, abused yeah. in such positions. People are brushed. And they are supposed yes. to be you silent. Know, especially if they, are, if they are busty. Ah. They'll just turn around. As because in, behind. As so you have a behind. So they happens. lean a little bit into your space yeah. so mm -hmm. that you can feel that brush. And then, yes, when you tell someone, the person will be like, what exactly are you complaining Talk about? about mm -hmm. there, there's a crowd here. I see that in queues. Mm -hmm. So you see that, yes, there's a crowd, but also there's a respectable distance yeah. you give someone, but people, some people don't take it. They uh. take advantage of that because how then do you now want to dissect that thin line between you brushing that person and the person, um, you know, take encroaching mm. on your space? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a thing. Okay? Please, Let's respect each other. Yes, Mr. Also make also mention, another place where it plays out is, like, when I used to be on a, when I used to take a bike regularly, it was extremely uncomfortable. You see the bike men leaning, like, I feel like you are leaning back towards <laughs> me. So I, I oh, do the like bike this, like yes. this. <laughs> and we need to understand, and I, and I see messages here saying, um, maybe it was the tone of her voice, she, was, she used a commanding voice yes. to talk to oh, him. But you have to use a commanding voice. Then, then another message was like, he did not, the, the, Isha did not touch her. Mm. You know, so, it, this, for me, the messages, whatever we discuss, any story that has to do with any form of harassment or all of that, mm -hmm. the responses I get we'll online, it. it just shocks me, like, are you kidding me? Is it, is it because it's not you... Mm. It's happening to yeah. which one is she used the commanding so, tone? So, 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 so you are confident in me, everybody will look at you like, oh, So, who do you think you are? Yeah. Oh, because you are an honorable, or oh, because she's in it. No, I did not know she was you... honorable. I like if I don't remember, I'll have, she I'll have does done not something to be honorable. She's a person, human female being. or male. I don't yeah. want you in my so space. Let's it's just... simple. We have right. uh, comments on our okay. YouTube. Okay. Um, ACAC says, This woman don't have a point convincing to make. Just leave the rest of the other uh, women, they will sort out their issues. You are the only one indirectly intimidating the man. But then Carl Williams says, I don't want to hear anything. As soon as she expressed her concern, she should have, he should have corrected himself. Jenna said, the man intimidated her, which was wrong. He could have touched her. It is wrong that you do that. Um, Jenna also says, a lot of women have suffered assault and intimidation from male, uh, male counterparts in the past. Okay. A lot of times when this right. happens, it is simple, but step aside. I don't queue. When I go to a queue, I say, please, I'm behind you. I don't queue because of things like this. Yeah, right. So... Okay, that's all we can take uh, on this segment. I just hope that um, we learn about personal space. I think that's the real reason, crux of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yes, make, but there was called. no physical harassment, but there was no verbal harassment either. But that, that invasion of your personal space, which is a real feeling. It's a real thing. Please, a real thing. Let's not assume that people are just being um, overzealous about it. It's actually people really feel intimidated and harassed when you do that. Let's go on a break. When we come back... We get an update from the Ikoyi Collapse Building. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners, and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. TVC News is our award-winning 24-hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live 
from our custom-built, state-of-the-art news headquarters. PVC, the top-rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all-female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With these bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV Station of the Year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT, and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9. Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking, advocating, protesting as the arts are meant to be. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're gonna have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get an in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Thanks for staying with us now. I'm told we have our correspondent, Mr. Theophilus Elama, who is going to be giving us an update on the collapsed building in Nikoi. Good morning, Theo. Are you there? Yes, I am here, Mario. Please uh, tell us, yes, we know yesterday that um, the owner, the building owner, Mr. Fabio Shibano, and his friend, Mr. Wiley Bola um, bodies were found. Any other bodies recovered today? And um, are there any other updates? That you'd like to give to us this morning? Okay, from uh, the update we have here, first of all, the death toll has been, has been set at 40. Now, if you look behind me, work is just starting uh, some minutes ago at about 9.34 a.m. Work started.
by the time we got here, it was raining, and we, we thought that because of the rain, work had to stop. But by the time we spoke with one or two persons, we realized that work had stopped since about 12 midnight. Uh, that was what we the information we got a lot of family members and onlookers were here complaining about the situation now someone is here with me to uh, give give us his perspective his uh, his family member is trapped in that rubble there and he was one of those who was complaining about the situation now tell us now what happened since midnight that you've been here i actually slept here i was waiting to i, I just wanted to have a picture of what work I wanted to have a picture of how the work goes on at night. Mm. We lost connection. I don't know. Oh, man, I was waiting for the family member and spent the night there. And then work, was, work, work stopped for hours in exactly. between that. It's, I know that we might not be trying to recover anybody alive anymore, but there's an emotional attachment to see that a proper burial is done for their family member that has been lost. And so it is expected that because of sensitivity, even if it is not full-blown work, something should at least be going on all through the hours of the day. And I know we might not have enough hands, some people might be tired, but it, it sort of, the, the sort of shift must be going on. It's, it's sad for someone to report 12 noon to 9 a.m. I'm sure the um, Lasema officials would have something to say about that, but... Nobody will feel comfortable right. hearing you know, that. You know, um, when we talked about about um, shifts with the NEMA bus, it seemed like it was impossible. So working at night during when roads are done is, of course, providing light immediately. At that site, that could have been put in place. Have lights, then do shifts. If you need to, you know, service your trucks, have uh, backup trucks to do this. And maybe we would have saved more people. But now we have 40... People um, dead. Right. I'm told that we're back. Hello, Theo. Um, uh, crane board. They were all gathered at uh, construction companies. They were all here. So are they waiting for the governor to come or the deputy governor to come before they would now say, before they attend to the issue on ground? Do we understand? So this, I think it's wrong. So... They stopped work at about five minutes, after, five minutes 12. after 12. Yeah. And so they just started work about some minutes to 10. 10, min uh, 10 minutes to 10. Hmm. How does this make you feel? It makes I feel bad because, and the work they are doing now is not like they are trying to get people out. The work they are doing is just to clear the, the rubble, heap them into the, uh, the tippers that you can see here, here outside. So they are, that's just all they are doing because the Red Cross is not here to pick up the, uh, the, the, the corpse of the people that might have been stuck in there. You understand? So the Red Cross is not here to put them in body bags. So they are obviously not working in the areas where they can find anybody uh, body to pick up. My brother is still stuck in there. I have not seen his body. I don't know if he's alive or if he's dead. And that's the situation of a lot of people that were That is the situation well. of a lot of families here. Lots of people are still around here waiting for their family members to be found. They've been sleeping here since Monday. I came in here on Tuesday. I, I, I started coming here on Wednesday. And since then, you know, the job has been like, okay, fine, they've been, they've been active via Wednesday, Thursday. But for Christ's sake, why is Friday separate? Because Oshibana was found at about five minutes, ten minutes to six yesterday. This is wrong now. Thank you very much for talking You're to welcome, us. sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, there you have it now. One of the family members of the victims complaining about the situation. But as it is now, work has started already. From You can, you can see from the visuals of our camera can uh, zoom in between. You can see that work has started already. And they're ensuring that uh, this pileup comes to ground zero. But so far, we hear that the death toll is now 40. We do not have other figures because I uh, was still waiting to see if some um, uh, bodies will be recovered from this debris. How many people are still expecting to recover from under the rubble? Because I know the governor had complained that there was no manifesto to tell us exactly how many people were in the building. So we know we found 40 and nine were rescued. Do we have a, an understanding from those who have actually been rescued of how many people were probably in that building? So we know who were, how many more people were expecting to get. The thing is that we do not have an understanding of how many people were in that building because you realize that workers were here 
and from the information um, from um, since the, the day the incident happened till today, uh, a lot of people were seen working here at the building. A lot of people, artisans, electricians, and all of that. A lot of people were seen working there, and so no one at this point can say this certain number of people were working here because. Like, like when, when you're building a, a, an apartment or, 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 or a high-rise high building, you have quite a lot of workers coming in to do menial jobs here. So no one is sure as to the number of people that were in here working before the building collapsed. Right. So we can see that there are um, family members sitting under a tent. So these people there, uh, have there been anyone amongst them who have... Um, who were able to identify maybe bodies recovered of their family members and then left the tent. Are these people sure that their family members are there or they're just missing and they're thinking they might be there? Are these questions, have they been asked of them? Are these, so that that may also help us to know who exactly may still be missing and may still be under the rubble. Under the tent, lots of these people here <laughs> A lot of them I've spoken to off camera are sure that their family members are in the rubble. And so there were parts of those complaining about the fact that workers are stopped working since midnight. There, there was a, a sort of a mini focus when the cameras came around because they were not happy at the situation. They complained about the fact that um, why, they were asking questions, why would work have to stop after everything at midnight? They're concerned about the fact that they haven't even seen the, the bodies of their own family members. And so why we work? So they are waiting and complaining and want the government to ensure that the, 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 the rubble goes to ground zero and they are sure their family members are there and they can get the bodies before they will leave here. Theophilus, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, um, you know, while we're not professionals in this, um, it looked obviously like they were just trying to get the rubbles out, like the um, family member that has been waiting overnight they mentioned. Is it possible in any way for them to still recover bodies with the system of excavation going on there, based on what you're saying? It looks very possible. With the excavation happening, it looks very possible that while they are trying to excavate, um, this debris, they will see dead bodies in between or even down. Because pictures flying all over the internet me <laughs> show that some people were still on the ground floor when the building collapsed. And so it's a very it's a high possibility that they will see some other uh, they will recover right. some other dead bodies from this debris. So I mean the good the good thing is that I mean just yesterday um, the owner of the building was recovered. So it means that they're still rescuing. They're still well, they're still trying to recovering people. So it's not like they're giving up, but they're just clearing the rubble. They're still looking for um, bodies they can find. Um, we just have to wait. I mean, I mean, as I said, we've all learned from Surfside, and we knew that it took weeks for them to finally bring everybody out. So re recovery is a long process. It can be painful for the family members, but the truth is that we all just have to wait and see um, how many people we can recover as soon as possible. But our hearts really, really go out to the family of those who have lost their loved ones, and we hope that this committee members that have been put together would actually give us results. In fact, that's my final question. Still, the committee, have you seen them this morning? Have they come around to investigate or to ask questions or are they yet to resume start work today? Uh, well, we've not seen the members of the committee come okay. here to ask questions at this point. We haven't seen any members of the committee. We was, yeah. They were just started this morning. Uh, well, by the time we got here, it had, that nobody was working on the side, but right now the work has started. So we expect that members of the committee will come in to do some preliminary investigation to ascertain the cause of the collapse. All right. Thank you very much, Theophilus, for giving us an update on that. Uh, let's go on a break now. When we come back, we'll move on to other things. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. At TVC Communications, we're all about our audience. Millions of viewers, listeners and readers every day all around Nigeria. Our two TV stations are among the most watched in Nigeria. 
TVC News is our award winning 24 hour national and international news channel headquartered here in Lagos, broadcasting live from our custom built state of the art news headquarters. TVC, the top rated family entertainment channel, is the place for fun, music, and information. With our breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria, the all female chat show, Your View, the best soaps and dramas from Nolly, Bali, and Hollywood, music and entertainment blast, courtesy East Flash, and of course, award-winning news and current affairs. It is all here. With news bureau and studios around the country and the ability to go live anywhere, anytime, we are first for breaking news in Nigeria. Awarded the NMMA TV station of the year, TVC News is the station of choice for news that is first, accurate, balanced and reliable every time. TVC and TVC News, watched by over 4.5 million people in Nigeria, every day on Terrestria, DTH, DTT, OTT and available to viewers in the UK on Sky TV. Watch all of our world-class programs on TV, online and on our app. TVC and TVC News, the best entertainment and news for Nigeria on TV and online. And when you can't watch us, listen to us. 102.3 Max FM Lagos and 90.9 Max FM Abuja are now ranked among the most listened to radio stations in Nigeria. Now, with over 1.5 million listeners every day, we're the people's favorite radio station. Best hit music, best on air talent. Max 102.3 hit music for Lagos and Max 90.9 hit music for Abuja. We are your home for that fun, entertainment, and hit music. In Lagos, TVC, our leading family entertainment TV channel, has a 47% market share. But this is just the start of our journey as we plan to add even more services to entertain and inform our ever-growing audience. Thanks for being part of the TVC communication story. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of Your View and I will be staring up our guests to get an in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. How we're doing, guys? Is the makeup in progress? Makeup? Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script? Check. Are we set in the PCR? All tip in place? PCR? Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights are... Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission.
thanks for staying with us. So before we move on to our hot topic of the day, we have with us um, gentleman, Mr. Jide Babalola. He is the, the second party in mm -hmm. the elevator saga, <laughs> in the thing that happened in the elevator. So he reached out to us because obviously we spoke to the honorable member earlier. Uh, Mr. Jide Babalola, are you there? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes. So earlier we spoke with Honor we spoke with um, Honorable Butolu Lokwe, uh, and she explained to us um, what happened. And now that we have you on the line, could you kindly tell us? Oh, I think we lost that call. We'd really like to hear from him because it's always good to have both sides of the story, so we have a balanced conversation. Because the issue, regardless of what happens, the conversation really is about personal space, understanding and respecting personal space. That's the whole idea. We we'll try to connect with him in a minute. But uh, in the meantime, I think we'll move on to our hot topic of the day, which is continuing the conversation we had yesterday. And it was because I think Nima wasn't there, and we thought it was important for you to be there. Because you're talking to issues on um, finances, sharing um, finances with your spouse. And it's important because you have experienced a lot of men and women who have um, who are falling short of what, 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 what should come to them because of the decisions they made on finances. So I know you have some experience on that. That's why I wanted you, I wanted you to help us <laughs> understand better. How do we manage finances, especially when it comes to disempowered spouses? You know, mm. the women that they didn't work all their lives. Mm. You know, they don't have money. And then they put everything, every, every small thing they have, they put in the same pot. Mm. And, so, and unfortunately, somehow they, um, they, they miss out on it at the end. There's a principle of law that I, I felt encouraged for women that are supposedly disempowered when, when I was studying um, laws of equity, and it's the principle of advance, advancement. But recently, even abroad, that principle has now been... Okay, so I have to pause you. I'm told he's back okay. now. So I'm sorry we have to keep switching, but it's important to hear Mr. Gidi Babalala's side. I'm told he's back now. Mr. Babalala, are you there? Yes, I am. Very I'm good. Hello? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. I was driving, but I received several calls, and you know, I thought, and you know, I'm just, you know, taking this now. I, I really appreciate, you know, your inviting me to uh, express my decision. You know. Thank you very much. So tell us, sir, what happened on that day exactly? Tell us like, your own side of the story. It was yesterday, quarter to twelve. I left the office of, of the honorable member of the National Assembly. I told him that I need to go and pick my children somewhere. I was really in a hurry. Okay, normally I avoid crowded elevators, but the one I was close to, I bought the I joined you know, the elevator. We were going down to from the third floor. So when we got to the, top, to the second floor, even though it was crowded, two or three more people came in. So, you know, making it necessary for us to shift a bit. I was very conscious of the space of the two women, you know, in the elevator with us. You know, I, I'm always very conscious of that anyway. So, Suddenly, I just heard from behind me, sideways, you know, behind me, you know. So, angry expressions of something like you're about to bump into me, don't bump into me, and all that. And I was shocked, you know. And, you know, after, after hearing one or two more things, I just had to, you know, look at the person. And she said that, you know, she, she was not very angry, really, you know. I understand if there's any anxiety about that. If she was tired, you know, who are you? What, you know, what are you, what, you know, you're about to bump into me and all that. But I, I, I had to ask you that, my time was taking it easy. You know, I didn't know that she, at that point, I did not know that she was an honorable mem member of the house. So I referred to her as madam, you know, which, which probably caused more anger. You know, so I said, madam, calm down, nobody's bumping into you. And she was really angry, you know, I said, okay, now, nah, you know, who are you and all that, you know. I, I responded. I said, that, Madam, who are you two? What is your name? You know, just the way she asked me. So by the time we got to the grass floor, there was uh, there were some top government officials and honorable members coming. She approached them and you know she was really angry, so they tried to intervene. One of them asked me that, okay, what happened? You know, and I explained very briefly. So I was told by one Mr. of Baba Lala, the Mr. let me ask you, at, at, at any point in time, did you apologize for being in her space? I did not invade her space. It was a crowded elevator, the public elevator in the House of Reps, okay. that was meant for commoners like me. 
There was one specially meant for honorable members. I don't ever go to that one. But that one, there were nine of us in a, in a part in a legislature. And I never, you know, our body never touched. Today, till this moment, you never say that our body ever touched or anything. It was just from a warning of, you know, somebody, don't bump into me that everything started degenerating. I never right. experienced this sort of thing in my life. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so Mr. Thank Mbola, you very much. I would like us to see. I don't think it's about um, a commoner's elevator or you know special elevator. No, I think you. I, I think you. I think it's first about the fact that someone has said to you, "Oh, don't bump into me." Maybe she saw that you were about to bump into her. But secondly, could you, uh, when you talk about it, were you upset that she said, "Don't bump into me," or did you think there was a tone of voice that she used that didn't sit well with you? Is it the fact that don't bump into me was your problem or the fact that maybe her tone of voice was not acceptable to you? No, the, the tone was really intense. And I thought I could calm things down. When she started asking, who are you? What is your name? I thought, you know, I can just respond. I said, madam, who are you? What is your name, too? That, you know, I thought it's a simple matter that we can de-escalate, you know, at that point. You know? Then All by right. the time we got downstairs, it only got worse. Yeah. Mr. Rabadide, um, Mr. Rabadala, did you, did you understand her point of view? Did you feel like she had a reason to be agitated? Without, without doubt, without doubt, you know, I've lived, you know, you know in, in the northern part of Nigeria and in the you know, other parts of the south, without doubt, a woman has a, a, a right to a private space that should not be invaded. Whether she complains about it or not, a man must respect the private space of a woman. I believe that, you know, very sincerely. Okay, Mr. Mbalola, you just said earlier now that you said to her, calm down, nobody's trying to bump into you. So yes. uh, could you have um, done any other thing? Because, you know, from our own point of view, you were bumping into her. About to. Or you were about to. So even though the... <laughs> Elevator was crowded, like you said, nine people, nine persons within the elevator at the time. Yes. Could you have seen it from a point of view of, of a space rather than a crowded elevator? Well, because even between, between, between the honorable member and I, somebody dropped a jerry can. One of the cleaners, or two, one of the people you know, in the elevator that we met there had a jerry can, which was between us. I couldn't have bumped into her for any reason. And that, was, that is what I kept saying, that male or female, I can't bump into anyone. See, for God's sake, I, had, I, I, I got infected with coronavirus last year. It was the horrible experience for my family. Even right. I bought into that lift, that elevator, it was because I was in a hurry to have picked my kids right. from where they were. I don't support crowded elevators. Right. I avoid it. All right. Thank you very much. I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you very much for right. helping us to get your side of the story. As I said, regardless of how this tilts, the point is that people, human beings, must respect each other's space. And he's saying that he acknowledges that a man and woman should have personal space and nobody should bump into each other. So, and she also acknowledged that he didn't bump into her, he was about to. And then so that's where she, she, she stopped him. Right. But the truth is, either way, the, 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 the objective of this conversation is that we must always recognize that people, individuals have personal spaces that we shouldn't... shouldn't take offense um, or think the voice is loud when the person is trying to express how they feel. So in our expressions, it doesn't, the tone cannot be gentle or nice because okay. she is the one anticipating an invasion yeah. into that space. Yeah. So the tone can be anyhow, but okay. you <laughs> on the receiving end try to you know, create right. respect. That's Thank you very much, Mr. Jide Babalala, for sharing your side of the story. Okay, moving back now to our story. We started this conversation yesterday concerning... Finance. And the reason why we said it was because um, we got messages from people complaining. I think it was a man that was saying mm. that um, his wife wanted him to change the to property change the... that she acquired before they got married into her name when they got married. No, no, into his name. Joint That's account. a different... Yesterday, we That's talked a... about oh. joint account. Then we're going to break. When we come back, we'll establish the <laughs> story properly. <laughs> Stay with us to be right back. <laughs> no Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Come closer. A little bit more. Perfect. I have exciting news for you. You asked for it and you got it. Your favorite breakfast show, Your View, will be going to two hours. We're going to have in-depth analysis of the newspaper review, 
and more conversations on the hot topics. The ladies of your view and I will be staring up our guests to get an in-depth into all the various topics and you, our viewers, will have the opportunity to call in and share your views. After all, it's your view. Join us on Your View, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for a fantastic conversation. Don't miss it. How we're doing, guys, is the makeup in progress. Makeup. Check. Are the scripts on the prompter? Script. Check. Are we set in the VCR? All time and place? VCR. Check. Clock is ticking. Time is racing. Lights are. Plans all set. 120 minutes of hot entertainment. We are ready for the mission. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw ether material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. with us now going back to the story so yesterday we as i said before we talked about joint accounts and all that i wanted you to i wanted to hear your own perspective concerning because you know a lot of women and men who have been victims but well, i'll link it to the story talk we introduced earlier which is a different topic entirely which is the fact that a young girl worked so hard for her money was able to get a flat i think it, it, it's a bedroom flat it's, it's got tenants you know and flats. then it's flats right and um when she now finally about to get married her husband said i knew her husband to be said, okay, all this, your fine, fine property, everything that you have, but yeah, transfer it to my name because you are now under my... Control. You are submitting to me as your head of the house. Hmm. So all your properties that you have been having... Is that right? So is that the right thing to do? So I would like you to... I'll start with you for the first one and then the second one. So uh, like I was saying earlier, that for women who are not empowered, who give small, small, and don't think it counts, if you're able to show that you advance something, that principle of 
advancement covers such where the law says that okay now you are now joint owners because even though it wasn't a contract you were given but abroad is been vacated. I don't. I don't have the present um, realities of our laws or court uh, decisions on it now. But in a situation like this that we have, where a young girl has worked so hard for her property, legally and religiously, you have a right to own your own, just as you have a right to be married, and you cannot. You don't have to mix the two. It is that line of abuse that we now start to use godly means and explain <laughs> women into giving out. So a man who is, who is confident in himself would not ask her to do that. Also, as a young girl, the moment you own a flat, this young girl in question had eight flats. God bless her very well. She was wise <laughs> in investing, and she had eight flat building that she had invested in. She had an account that was well-funded that she had wise spending when she joined a career had helped her to get gather. She should do a will. That covers every and all of her dependents. Why I'm saying that is that when you are married to such a person and you even have a, you don't have a will, that person automatically becomes your next of kin and can disinherit all your other dependents. So for a young girl like that who had elder ones and parents living, something can happen, anything can happen. Based on my experience, People die suddenly. Mm -hmm. You leave your estate, you die in state, you leave your estate to the mercy, and the court's decision is whether it's a marriage certificate. That person becomes your next of kin. And if the person is not as generous or, you know, or objective in thought, and think of all of the people that loves you, that you love, that you would have loved, that your wealth take care of, mm -hmm. he will just sit on everything. Oh, and that, that is seen as on one side. There's a different angle where... A woman has given everything, sort of submission, where I give everything I've earned and I hand it over to my husband mm -hmm. because I trust him and he's wise enough to take a decision. And that's he does something big for the whole family. Eventually, he makes a lot of money and he hands everything over to me. So in the long run, it was beneficial to me. So there are two sides of the story because there are stories where the man, the man starts really small, mm -hmm. the woman is doing well, and she hands over her entire business to the man. He then does it so, so much better. So is there a, is there a, a yardstick to determine... At what point should I hand over or should I not hand over? That's really the question. Mm. Because you're submitting, at the same time, you're not submitting. Okay, so, I, like I said, we, we discussed this thing um, a bit yesterday, and obviously we, we know that there's still more scenarios to it. There are different... Each, each partner in a relationship are two different people from different walks of life and different experiences. And the conversation is to... Is the, the conversation should be had between the couple to understand... But we are, that's the ideal circumstance where you are in a relationship with someone who respects your opinion mm -hmm. and is willing to listen to you. But that's not the reality in many marriages. Mm -hmm. There are many marriages where the, there is the, the, the conversations are one-sided. It's a, I have said this, you obey me. It is, I am the head, and this is the way the family would go. Submit your entire income into the, and I will decide how it is going to be spent. And, when, and my, my thought yesterday was, if you find yourself in a situation where you cannot legislate as a family on how money is going to be shared, then obviously there are issues in that marriage. And you can still keep, choose to keep the marriage going together, but you must find a way to protect your interest financially Very if important. anything happens. What if your husband is trying to test you? You know, want to see mm -hmm. how you know, there's, there's, there's always that angle. Ah, mm -hmm. You'll just test if she's totally committed to me. And then you fill the test and you see you, you, don't, you don't hand over your We have failed it now. We have failed uh, it. <laughs> 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 because, really, then we have failed it. Yeah, because yeah, this is where even single um, people in um, singles have that drama of test that you now say, you don't give me money, you don't do anything. You're trying to know if I, if I, if I genuinely love you before you now marry the person. I feel like you should, all, there's no testing in the matter. Have a conversation and expect honest, honesty from one another. Mm -hmm. But like Nima said, people should write wills. And we don't take it seriously because we expect that. I, I had a conversation with my husband after I had that stuff and, I, and my question was, um, who is your next of kin? Because you know, you mentioned it. Who is, because who is who your, who, who's, who's, who's the, what's the name? Of kin? Mm -hmm. Yes, what name is in your next of kin? Did you update? after we got married, because it's not something we thought to discuss. But, like, 
Am I the one in all your accounts next of kin? Mm -hmm. That's a good question to ask. Very yes, important. because I had to change my previous account when I went to change my name. Yeah. Because they asked that, do I want to update everything that has to do with my contact? But when I mean I changed my name in my account officially, I now asked that they change. Because my mom was the one on all my next of kin when I was single. And it would have remained that way if I did not deliberately go and change mm. the so particular to decision. Care, I, did to take care of that. So I made sure I didn't marry under the act. I didn't go to any registry to marry. I married Islamically. So when you live a life like this and I, the Quranic heirs automatically takes care of whatever I have and leave behind so that my husband cannot just be on it. So you're not married legally? On that I'm day. married legally. Islamically. But not under Islamic. the marriage recognized under the, under the laws of Nigeria. Very well recognized. But not go to the Registry. marriage. So that the marriage act does not take over my interest. Mm. If I do that, immediately my husband becomes my only next of kin, except maybe my children. If but I die not why without children. No. I just wanted Islamic laws to govern everything that mm. I do. So um, that's why I deliberately did that. Mm. Then there was a mistake that I used to do. When I started my business at 17, I opened an account and my next of kin was my brother. And when I got married, he was still my brother till maybe when I was pregnant. And my husband immediately we got married, documented everything. Immediately, in fact, two weeks was saying, Where's the certificate? I need to stop, stop at the office. I need to change. And I became next of kin. So one day I was just standing in the bank and I, was, I saw a woman and a man arguing. I was like, ah. They were brothers and sisters, and one would mismanage things. Mm. So that security women used to have that no, it's only my blood. <laughs> your blood can't just be one nonsense person. And then there's also the very important, even if your blood is the correct person, he will start his own family. Do you want to put your own family, maybe your children? in a position where they have to depend okay. on another person who has his own family to take care of, who you now have estates that your brother, as your next of kin, has taken over, used or for his personal gain, your children cannot fight it mm -hmm. because you did not change anything. They will go to your, place, your last place of work, they will receive your packages, and they can decide mm -hmm. whether your children will do or they will not. They will say, well, it's your mother. I'm doing your, your best interest. And then they protect their own immediate family and wife because you didn't do the needful. So if you have something, you, there's always the best part of having it documented. All right, I want then, to go back to this young lady. Yeah. I mean, this topic mm -hmm. of the fact that she has eight flats. <laughs> She's a young woman, she's about to get married, and everybody's telling her, you have to submit to your husband. Mm. That's your job, submit. Whatever he says is law. And he's saying, this is your properties. Change the deed of assignment into my name. Change it to my name. Now, there are two things. He might be doing that because Successful. he wants to take advantage or he wants to help her. We don't know. We never know. They are two sides. So what, what are your thoughts? Without How do... taking it. Yeah. Yeah, there are different ways. Help her, yeah. Why let, let, let me get from her. You know, the, the, the story is that she was asking what to do. So she's actually considering, you know, what she's not sure what the right thing to do is. Yeah. And, you know, she also said that when she told him about it, it took him a while. I think he had gone home, thought about it, and then called her to give her what she needs to do. So it, it also seems like he has taken advice from someone. Mm. I think we're not giving the right advice to young people. Um, this thing that that, man, that young man said, that she said, her fiancé said, is things I've heard people who are not married say. And you see people who are married, they have a different sort of conversation because we understand this marriage thing is a journey. Coming in and saying, write me your asset, Pass this to me. Even if you wanted that, you know, there's something that happens within marriage that things that are away from you and closed off from you become open and you mm -hmm. share it. If you understood that had that maturity, that is not the time to be having asking her to give him anything. Mm -hmm. But what most importantly, it is not his to have. It exactly. is not his own. This is hers, and she's bringing it as a to bonus. To have become one. Yes. To have become one in and other things. you have things. access to it. Yes, you have Not access you to it. The benefits of, it. of what she has would play out in their marriage, in raising their children, would also provide a cushion for him. He's in a rented apartment. Probably they're able to now get a space that they can start, you know. So money that he would have put towards rent, he'll be able to put towards business or something that they can do together. All right. So he should see that as a benefit. The fact that she has that as a benefit towards how they will grow, right. not to own it and take it from her. Yeah, let me take Hassan. Hassan, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, members of the uh, people. Yeah. <laughs> Please, um, you see, this issue of uh, a man asking a wife to transfer the property, that man was an irresponsible man in the first place. 
Mm. I don't see a man doubling into a property of his wife. Or turn on her, put on this. I consider that aspect as woman wahala. A woman would always ask you, the house you build, put my name inside. Have you done your will? Have you done this? Have you done that? Women are very conscious of their feelings. And they enjoy women not to be, not to join with them, not to be in the same way with them. We are very conscious of that. It makes us stronger. And it makes us be on our guard. This issue of women that your money is our money. My money is my money. Men are very much aware of that. And it makes us very strong and responsible. My father, Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only child. <laughs> okay. you know, because he trusted that. He didn't even know what was going to happen. Yeah. He went there and he took his only child. He, he laid it all God. down. Okay. Well, he wasn't even sure he was going to... Because he was ready to go, take it, mm -hmm. he killed kill this child or whatever. Mm -hmm. so he didn't know that God would, would bring a oh, ram. Yeah. He didn't know that. So this is what it seems like they're asking of this woman. Bring all you have. You trust me, you've married me, Abi. You trust, you trust me as your leader. Is, uh, Bring it now. Why can't we, so we trust each other to that level? I, I think that, you know, when they say, when, when we throw that statement, your money is our money, my money is my money, we make, people make it look like it's women are coming from a selfish point of view. But we said it over and over again that we're, we're, it's a family. If at any point in time, both parties are not, must not be selfish about taking responsibility. You must not let, it's like saying you are letting the house be in darkness because you don't want to buy fuel. Or because my husband cannot afford to buy the full filling generator. All of us will stay inside darkness. Which Who is, is suffering? You know, some, some people actually might do it, but it is totally wrong. We, this, if, yes, the man's responsibility is to take care of the house, but if, he, if for any reason he's unable to do it, someone should make sure the bills are paid. That is what is important. So if a woman is keeping her money, it's not because she's keeping her money so that she can go and be buying something weird at, at outside. It's so that there is a form of security women have from having their own form because life has happened to many women around them and they've been taught to keep something so that if anything goes wrong, well, they have been you better protected. If she said, look, let me add your name to what I have. No. So let um, me add your name. It, so that here's how I think about it. You have acquired a property before you got married and you are about to get married, not that you are married. Let the man understand that. Give it time. Let's get married first. Let's, let's do a few years together. Let's know ourselves a bit more. Whatever belongs to me by law automatically would come to you upon anything happening to me. So it's not like I'm, the property now becomes... Well. <laughs> oh, let me take this call. I'll come tomorrow. Well. Dr. Moyo, are you there? Well. Is it money? I'll be doing this with money. Is money because it's a problem? Mm. Dr. Moyo, are you there? So many great You're alive. Yes, Please, go ahead. Okay. You know, um, this, this issue about marriage, marriage is about sharing, it's about loving. Mm -hmm. You have to keep loving every day. You wow. have to keep sharing every day. But, you know, I'm not married, but um, I know marriage has its own individual experiences, which I'm, I'm, I'm still learning from different people within my environment and from new ladies. However... There are some things that don't sit right with me. You don't start a marriage with that kind of note. It's risk of exploitation. It looks like you have to stop it. The, the woman that you on her own willingly, if a woman loves you, she's ready to give you anything. So women go and borrow to, to make their men happy. But when you are starting on some meeting, make up in a call. There's something, the guy is up to something. I don't know, it doesn't just be And then she should sit at the she should come to that parents. Hmm. And then she should come to her parents if her parents have successful, happy marriage. Or people within the church, or a lawyer, or a counselor yeah, yeah, that will yeah. give an objective yeah, advice. Yeah, yeah. Because when a woman loves, her head is not really correct. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Moyo. As lawyer, you should talk to. So mm. this thing called submission has been a lot of times misconstrued and easily abused. So we see now women, when you are married, you submit your property. Some will submit their bodies. And ah, a you woman, submit your body now. the one that I saw that broke my heart the most is a woman saying, I have submitted my body. You're pregnant. 
you have a um, pregnancy, um, sorry, high blood pressure in pregnancy and the doctors are advising, sign and have a CS so that we can save you. And you allowed a convulsion start while your husband is saying that I have called the village. In my family, they don't do CS. I am a husband and I will not sign. And your life was being threatened. Your doctors are giving you advice. You are confused. There's no point Extreme of confusion. cases. Mm. As long as you are conscious, you don't need a next of kin for such things. If your eyes are open, if your husband, Toby, is already telling you, sign property to me, don't marry. Because they are marrying property. They are not marrying you. Mm. Yes, because it's clear. This is exploitation. If you could have worked this property, did you think that if you had met that person before you did those investments that were wise, you would have them? If the person saying, transfer them to me, you know, let that person show his own, his own um, ingenuity in working his own money, his own um, wisdom in investing and how wise he's, he's dealing with his own finances before you can say you're trusting in marriage and handing There's over. so many bad if things. You don't, if you do it just because... You are getting married. No, nothing to show. Mm. And the same Nima, thing I think they should have advice. Let, 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 let in okay, so you see, we have a story of people who have been in a relationship for a long time. He didn't know about this mm -hmm. um, thing that she had. So he loved her enough to want to get married to her. And he was open you to say, I am level. renting. I'm, so this is a man that feels regular Nigerian man. I'm going to marry my wife and take care of her. So this information came just a few days you know, a few months mm. towards this marriage. So this is a man that already loves her. I feel that he was just ill-advised. I feel this is a young man now has found himself with this new um, scenario. How do I handle it? And he's gone to one baba <laughs> that is like, whoa, bro, you're lucky. Just make sure she says everything in your name. And I feel, that, for me, that I feel that's what happens. But he needs to understand that in marriage, some things take time. There are some people who will tell you that when I first married my wife, I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. She brought everything. And then eventually, you know, she signed me on to this. And it's because he's proved over time that he can be trusted. And some of them even take over and do so much more with what she already has. Mm. But you don't come into a relationship and marry. It's asking somebody to hand over their property mm. to you. So, so, so I you think, wrap you know, we had a caller. We had a yeah. caller that said that they should get counseling and legal help. I think that it is extremely mm. important that if you find yourself in a situation... Get proof. Both of you should talk to a counselor mm -hmm. and a lawyer because they might create a document that puts things a bit in trust. That's number one. Number two is I feel that we've heard many stories of people that will say, right, right, buy the property in our future daughter's name. Buy the property in our future son's name. And then the person there and the father that they actually have somebody whose name is hey, already yeah. that old. That's a different can. So, no, but but let's just ask one. Yes. That, 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 so, I have to run, but I think mm -hmm. the, this issue is. I think we, we've been in marriage long enough to know that, listen... Give it time. Give, give it time. time. Yes. Wait, wait, this, 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 early, this early conversation, mm. eh? Wait, wait, wait. wait too early. <laughs> enter first. After you enter. Ah. Not just enter. Ah. You're you not doing a few years. Before you know, say, okay, yes. I want yeah, to change join, property. Let's join it. Because no. for my conversation before marriage, I don't think it's Even necessary. if you have not entered and this is... Come, this might be a sign of the kind of fights you'll be having. Yes, when you enter. That is all we can take on the show, Nima. We have to wrap up. Have a great weekend. Once again, our, fam our hearts go out to the families mm. of those who've lost their lives at the Ikoi building. And we're really, really hopeful and prayerful that this, after four weeks, this committee that I set up will tell us, get to the root of the matter, mm. and the right people will be persecuted for what has happened. Have a lovely weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now.